the only one who created everything. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Can you see the moon? Can you see the sun? Can you see the shining stars? Allah made them all. Can you see the night? Can you see the day? Can you see the clouds high? Allah made them all. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. Can you see the birds flying up so high? Can you see them in the sky? Allah made them all. Allah can hear me. Allah can see me. Allah can hear me. Allah can see me. Wherever I am, Allah is with me. We must believe in faith. Allah's divine faith. Whether it's good or bad, we still believe it's faith. We still believe it's faith. Everything in the universe is controlled by Allah. Everything in the universe is following Allah's faith. Allah is one. He is the only one who created everything. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome again to the stories of the prophets peace be upon them all. And we are with the great story of the great messenger of Allah, عيسى جيسس عليه السلام peace be upon him. I emphasized so many times with the beginning of the story that عيسى عليه السلام is not God, is not the son of God. Let me start with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say, praise be to Allah who begets no son and has no partner in his dominion, nor does he need any to protect him from humiliation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, magnify him for his greatness and glory. Alone. This is in Surah Al-Isra, chapter 17, verse 111. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, He is Allah, the one and only, Allah, the eternal, the absolute. He begets not, nor is He begotten, and there is no one like unto Him. This is Surah Al-Ikhlas, Qul Huwa Allahu Ahad, 112, the whole verses. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the son of Adam, the children of Adam insulted me. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking. The children of Adam insulted me. The son of Adam insulted me and he should not have done so. Claiming that I had a son while I am the one and only the eternal, the absolute who begets not nor is he begotten and there is none like unto him. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam also said, no one was more patience, has, uh, no one has more patience than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory to him. They said that he had a son while he almighty gives and recovers them from sickness and uh, misery. And they insult him saying so, and he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, still provides for their health and prosperity. They accused Maryam and did not believe her. They said this is magic. From the ta that time on, the Jews named her the prostitute, the whore, and named Isa the son of a prostitute. They rejected faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, they rejected faith that when they uttered against Maryam a great false charge, 
the Jews are insulting Christianity, insulting Christians and insulting Muslims by saying that Maryam was adulterous and she was not pure. And by insulting Jesus and calling him the son of a prostitute. This is a great insult to us, even Muslims. This is mentioned in the Quran in Surah An Nisa, chapter 4, verse 156. So, as we have mentioned before, although the birth of Jesus السلام, was indeed a miracle, it is not compared to the creation of Adam. السلام. Adam, the first human created from no father, no mother. While Jesus السلام, is created from a mother. So in, bo in fact, both are just manifestations of the power and greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever he subhanahu wa ta'ala de desires for something, he would just say for it be and it shall be. And this is in the Quran, the similitude of Isa. The, for Allah is as that of Adam. He created him from dust. Then he said to him, be, and he was. So that miraculous birth of Jesus does not make him God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from sand, from dust, and that did not make him God or the son of God. So glory to the ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can do anything. Christianity started with the birth of Isa alayhi salam. People saw that miracle, believed in, in that miracle. But unfortunately, with time, Christians deviated, changed the scriptures themselves, changed the book itself. And slowly, the, the teachers, the scholars, they changed the oneness of God into Trinity and changed the Bible in, itself to so many different Bibles and changed the words of God and the words of Jesus himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very angry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, they say, Allah, most gracious, has begotten a son. Indeed, you have put forth a thing most monstrous, so ugly, so great, so shaking, as if the skies are ready to burst, the earth is ready to split, and the mountains are ready to fall down in ruins because they said that God has a son most gracious to him for it is not consonant with the majesty of Allah most gracious that he should beget a son not one of the beings in the heavens and the earth would not come before God on the day of judgment as a slave and a servant. He does take an account of whatever they say and has numbered exactly every letter they have said and every one of them will come to him singly alone on the day of judgment and shall be judged for what they say. This is in Surah to Maryam. This great chapter of the Quran, the story of Maryam, has a whole devoted chapter of the Quran, Maryam, Mary, chapter 19. And these verses I just explained are verses 18 to 95, uh, 88 to 95. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the story, in, the, in this chapter, the story of Maryam, the birth of Jesus, the miraculous birth, the, the miracle that he spoke, the words that he uttered, and he refuses that God is, is, uh, has gotten a son and at the end of the story um, uh, of the chapter emphasizes that, that heavens will break down and earth will, will split and the mountains will fall down in ruins out of this world because that is not something easy, easy to say. It is it's blasphemous to say that God has a son. How could he? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created heavens and the earth from nothing without relying on some previous knowledge and without 
anything similar in form or substance. That creation is obviously more complex than causing a baby boy to be conceived in a womb of a mother without a need of a father. And definitely, the creation of Adam is much more complex than that. So to him is due the primal origin of heavens and earth and humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can easily make a woman have birth without a father. The saying that Jesus is a son of God not only has no evidence and no proof at all, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Prophet Muhammad and all the believers in the universal message of the oneness of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, if Allah most gracious had a son, I would be the first to worship. This is in chapter 43 verse 81. If indeed the claims is true, then prove it, prove it. And do you know now the scientific ways of logic and proof? Prove it. It is not enough to bring us a book that is full of contradictions and you tell us this is the proof. So, the above, uh, the, the, the verse that I just mentioned, that prove it and we will worship, is our answer to Christianity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his blessings on Jesus alayhi salam. Made him a great messenger, a great prophet, but he was a servant and a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the Islamic view about Isa alayhi salam. As evident in so many places and verses in the Quran. Prophet Isa like any other prophet, was very pious, very righteous, a servant, a slave, committed to worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and calling his people to that same belief and same practice. Prophet Jesus alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, from day one when he spoke, he did not, by the way, speak again when he was in a very small baby until he become he became a regular child after that he spoke at the regular age and so on so he yes that happened for once and those who saw it saw it but the others did not see it so many other people started to question him and and people said that we heard him yeah, that could be magic somebody played with your ears and so on so the Jews started to accuse him that he was not God especially that he did not speak again until he was a regular child. So he defended his mother, he defended that she was not adulterous, but still that was not enough for the Jews, the Jews that killed so many prophets, including the two prophets immediately before Jesus, Zechariah and Yahya. Now we go with the story of Isa alayhi salam. The miracle of him speaking in the cradle happened only, as I said once. The news spread of this miraculous birth and the speech and so on. And um, they knew that he would grow up and play a significant role in the lives of the Jews, the lives of the children of Israel. Some among the children of Israel were afraid because they know that this will be a prophet and a messenger and especially those corrupted scholars and leaders they know that he is the one to watch because he might take power from them so they started as i said immediately spreading the news that this did not did not happen and those who has heard it the, there was magic involved in it and uh, magicians can do more than that and so on so from day one, they contradicted and uh, faced Isa alayhi salam. Uh, he was born, as I said, in Bethlehem. She moved to Jerusalem and she stayed with him at a hill. Uh, she had a house on a hill nearby the great masjid, nearby Jerusalem. 
and occasionally, because she was very afraid for her child, she would keep him secluded from them. She, he, he, they would not allow, allow to visit him and see him and talk to him and so on. She kept him. She was so afraid for him. And occasionally, they would go away from the city, but she never left him inside the city, and she never left him alone. Allah, be he exalted, said about Mary, peace be upon her, and Isa, her child, alayhi salam, we gave them both shelter on a hill, high ground, affording rest and security. This is in chapter 23, verse 50. Scholars say that she lived in a place on a high ground near Jerusalem, on a, on a hill near Jerusalem. And now it's within Jerusalem, of course, but at that time it was outside Jerusalem. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided water and fruit for them. As years passed, Isa alayhi salam grew up and he showed great signs of goodness and knowledge and wisdom. But he was not asked to spread the message as a prophet and a messenger until he became 30 years old. That is when Yahya and Zakaria died. So he lived for 30 years without proclaiming his prophethood and his message. At that age, he was appointed as a prophet to the children of Israel. He was not appointed as a prophet to the whole world. He was appointed as a prophet to the children of Israel. The Prophet ﷺ, Muhammad tells us that every prophet was sent to his own people, except I, that I was sent to the whole humanity and the jinn. But every prophet before him was sent to his own people. So now Jesus has the duty to spread the message only among the children of Israel. If others are present, fine, but he has not, doesn't have to go into Africa or Arabia or other places. He was working within Palestine and surrounding to the children of Israel. With his appointment as a prophet to the children of Israel, he was honored with three great prophets, as I said, living at that time, but two of them were killed, Prophet Zachariah and Prophet Yahya alayhim salam And he saw, he saw what happened to them. And he saw how they treated Zachariah, the guardian of his mother. And he saw how they killed Yahya, his cousin. So Isa alayhi salam resumed the role of leading the children of Israel as a messenger, as a prophet, leading them to Allah, to the oneness of Allah, to the Tawheed. There is no God but Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we appointed him as a messenger to the children of Israel. This is very specific in the Quran. This is in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse 49. So he became a, a messenger, not for all people, but to the children of Israel. And as I said, each prophet is appointed to a certain people, except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is carrying the last message. Now, since he was young, he was given signs. He was given signs that he is somebody very special. These signs came very early on, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued giving him these miracles, one after another, to prove his prophethood and his new position as the, the reference, the religious guide to the children of Israel, the messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that Isa said, I have come to you with a sign from your Lord that I make out of clay as, it, as if it was the figure of a bird. I would create a figure of a bird 
and breathe into the mouth of that statue and it becomes a bird. By the will of Allah, I heal those born blind and the lepers with skin diseases that are incurable. And that is by the will of Allah. And I raise the dead from death and make them alive by the will of Allah. And I declare to you what sh shall come to you as food. I will tell you, you're getting this food coming to you. You're coming this meal coming to you. You don't know. And that is by the will of Allah. And I tell you what you hide in your stores and in your houses. And that is all by the will of Allah. Surely there is a sign for you if you do believe. This is in chapter 3, verse 49. So, these are some of the miracles of Isa alayhi salam that he showed to his people that he is a prophet and a messenger of Allah. We will talk about these miracles and more about the life of Isa alayhi salam next uh, story, inshallah, next episode, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.